scriptures talk is going to make about you a blessedness whatever stage that happens that to a man you to attain. whose delight you. is in the law of God. So as someone said, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom. And we remain indebted Hallelujah. This teaching tonight is very dear to my heart. And I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus. The first thing I want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned. The topic is extraordinary success. As far as being successful in life is concerned, please listen to me. You have a role to play. Everyone say, I have a role to play. When it comes to the success equation, I want you to know that God has a part to play. But you also have a part to play. Please get this. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. We have two extremes in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of success. There are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that. And they neglect the place of God to their detriment. And they find out that they never become successful. And then there are others, especially those who are spiritual and they love God. And they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence, success should just occur automatically. Both people are in error. There is an imbalance. Are you getting my point? When it comes to the kingdom, you have a role to play and God has a role to play. It is your playing of your role and God playing his role that makes your success extraordinary, that makes your success guaranteed. Praise the Lord. It's important for you to know this. I always say this when I'm teaching on success, that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truth with people when they do not see the need to receive it. Are you getting my point? It is very dangerous. Listen, let me tell you something. When God started out with me, I was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that God was giving me. And I made a big mistake and I don't want you to make that mistake. And the mistake that I made was that I assumed everybody had my kind of passion. Are you getting my point? 
So every revelation God shared with me, I was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with. And I saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls. And I carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it. They trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit. Never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it. Please get this. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, They that seek me will find me. You must communicate your desire and your desperation for God. It says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It's a law in the spirit. Never waste your time trying to invest your time, your energy, your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it. There are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested. Have you seen people like that? You pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games. Do not waste your time and your resources on people. Make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive. Is someone learning something this night? I used to feel so guilty because I felt if God gives you something, you should lavishly give it. And you know, I became an enemy to many people because I was forcing them to try to get these principles. And I just found out that some people are just not interested. Are you getting my point? So learn it tonight treasure the informations that you receive from the spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him are, are you getting what i'm saying You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star. very important you have a role to play and God has a part to play that's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant I like to use the word partnership for it that it takes you please never forget this never forget this your success is not all up to God and it's not all up to you you have a part to play and God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, He is more than faithful. You can trust Him to play His part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play His own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promise that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. The gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. There is a difference. They are both gospels. But I need you to understand something. The gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins and that if by faith you accept the free gift the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ the shedding of his blood his death and his resurrection that if by faith you open up your heart at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift are you getting my point now so under the gospel of salvation you do not do anything 
any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life that's not true the bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works hallelujah lest any man should boast but then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is only an entrance it should open you up to other realities in the kingdom are you getting my point now and then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom reveals jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that god did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom god finds a man god empowers that man and god begins to reveal to that man that he god has a need that we were saved unto good works we were not saved by works but we were saved unto good works not unto laziness so you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom hallelujah it's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um by the way let me celebrate two people um you have the photos media hallelujah i must appreciate these two great men of god they have shaped and molded my life i salute and i honor them in their absence or in their presence i'm not embarrassed they have mentored and built me they have imparted wisdom i cried for wisdom they are true apostles of wisdom lots of people make noise but see wisdom has fruits are you getting my point anyone can claim to be wise but there are fruits of wisdom and i honor these great servants of god the first of them is bishop david oyedeko i honor him in my life i salute him as an apostle of wisdom hallelujah i honor him and i appreciate god for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight different people say all kinds of nonsense wherever i sit down and i hear you say anything wrong against him i will get up and walk out of there i don't care who you are and what you are saying i don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor, what a mentor, what a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know. To take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. 
Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something write something this is a school hallelujah place value on knowledge place value on information in heaven when the apostle was in heaven he said right right don't just hear right because there is only so much your mind can take hallelujah so what is success obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal one of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories, especially in the continent of Africa and even in Nigeria, is that there are many sincere, please listen, many well-meaning Christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives. Please listen. We're going to examine something very powerful tonight. Why is it that many Christians are failures? So many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything. They never get to transform a generation. They never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in. Why is this so? Hallelujah. And I got to understand something very important and very powerful. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. I was asking the Lord this question and then one day the Lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind and then i heard one of these men of god sharing this thing again again and again the first person i had talking about this was dr mike mudok and then i had olumide emmanuel again talking about it please look up jeremiah 9 verse 24 but let him that glory had glory in this that he what understand it and know it me hold on why will the bible use i hope you understand that the, the 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 construction of scripture is very 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 detailed and very intentional he said let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me not just that he knows me alone not just that he understands me and i said ah that's the point there is a difference between knowing God and understanding God. Are you getting my point now? The knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy. You understand, you, you know his presence, you can sense his presence. You're seeing transformations happening in your life. The anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life. That's as a result of the knowledge of God. But when it comes to your success in life you must understand the ways of god the bible says he showed his acts to the nation of israel but unto moses he showed his ways his principles the inner workings that produce those results that are seen so it's not enough to know god you must understand the principles of the kingdom and one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Murdoch puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. The person of Jesus Christ secures your peace. But the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now. 
are you getting the difference now very very profound and very important the principles of jesus so all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of jesus but they rejected his person they will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from god they will never give him the glory they will never acknowledge him as the lord of their life but they they change the names of these principles but you know that these are kingdom principles at work but then we have on the other hand the church we love god we know everything about god we know all the names of god from genesis to revelation but we have rejected the principles of jesus so we have pastors we have leaders we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime but tonight god is separating us through wisdom in the name of jesus christ there are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obey in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage jesus was born in nazareth and apparently the nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures can anything good come out of nazareth but the best gift came out of nazareth are you following me now so when it comes to success please and please deliver yourself from this luck mentality a lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors well-meaning preachers that whoever god wants to bless he will bless whoever god does not want to bless have you heard that please be delivered this night in the name of jesus christ it's impossible listen when you understand the laws of the kingdom you will know why god is love and you will know why god is just righteousness and justice the bible says are the foundations of his throne joshua chapter 1 verse 8 the ultimate equation for kingdom success many of us read it we just recite it but there is a powerful revelation joshua chapter 1 verse 8 there are laws there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful listen let me tell you something please look up there are many people who hear what i'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say no forget it it's just nonsense we have seen people who don't know anything and god just bless them have you heard preachers like that i wasn't doing anything i was just sitting down and a blessing what is your concept of a blessing We're talking about socks. I mean, sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. Accomplishing much for his majesty. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book that contains laws, the laws of the kingdom. Many times when we hear law, we're just thinking law old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate during day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict 
that 90 percent is still f for then after you have done this not during not before please help me read that last that that last uh, the, the the last clause there for then are you ready one to read for then thou shalt make and thou shalt have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming god on things that god has no business one of the things that i have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of christ keeps you in integrity and you can when you kill a man to be rich that's bad success are you getting what i'm saying when you sleep around for money that's bad success when you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion that's bad success the success of many people in nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success hallelujah let's continue very very important i want us to examine certain things very very quickly um let's look at jeremiah 6 verse 16. one other thing i want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence success is not magic success is not luck there's no such thing as that a man said if you wake up and find yourself successful be sure you were not sleeping thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it you don't need to discover a road i mean to try to invent a road that has been found he said ask for the ancient part where is the good way it's only the good way that can give you good success is that true and he said and walk therein you can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking he said when you find it walk therein what's the result he said you shall find rest for your souls but what is the church saying but they said we will not walk is that not the testimony of many people we will not walk one day god will bless us god is see me praying you wait and see and we keep waiting and waiting and waiting hallelujah i come from a lineage of missionaries my grandfather they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the church of christ in nigeria you go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah 
my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what i'm saying I knew times when my mother would lock the door, you would hear her shouting and crying and praying. And at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference, I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they had the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful. The day they had what? Another voice. Is that true? Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? Who told you? That means you started hearing another voice. Your success in life, listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed. As stupid as it sounds, you will find out that there are people who will come. Passionately, they say, oh, Lawrence, it's not like I'm a wicked person, but I need to. The whole body of Christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words. And the Bible says, there is, as it were, many voices, and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required and that's why god is helping someone tonight i can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice the convictions that you have trusted and kept mm. hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it Number one, if you want to be successful, please listen. We're going to talk about the principle of mentorship. Listen. This has become such a controversial issue. I have a series just for this. And I trust that when God grants grace, we're going to deal with it. It's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of Christ. There have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship. Many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies 
but let me tell you a few things about mentorship very important first samuel 3 verse 12 to 13 please help us media we need to be very fast mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives there are two ways to learn in life number one mistakes number two mentors there are two ways to learn in life you learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors hallelujah mentorship is very very important please pay attention to what i'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom 3 verse 12 and 13 3 verse 12 and 13 first samuel 3 verse 12 and 13 thank you holy spirit is somebody getting blessed tonight hallelujah all right let's read together one to read and in that day i will perform against eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it will dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had i commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of christ and they call mentorship so wrong a mentor it's not just one that you submit to it's not just one that you admire a mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of christ all in the name of mentorship and many people never get blessed you do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing hallelujah a mentor is not just a person you submit to it's not just a person you admire oh i admire this person and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of god in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um, principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay i've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junks they say i need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it 
Is someone getting blessed tonight? Very important. Let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Someone is getting blessed in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. A mentor is a shortcut to your future. Mentorship is shortcut to your future. Experience is the slowest way to learn. Experience is the slowest way to learn in life. If you think everything you are going to get in life, there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man. You don't have any man's books you are reading. There are no tips. I share the Holy Spirit for myself. Experience is the slowest way to achieve. It's like going to Lagos by trekking. You will arrive, but you may arrive dead. Hallelujah. A mentor is your coach. He tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong. A mentor is not your friend. A mentor is not your confidant. You see where a lot of people miss it? Please, you neglect this principle I'm sharing. Just know that you have signed an agreement with failure. Guaranteed. A mentor is not your best friend. Your best friend loves you the way you are. Hallelujah. But a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are. This is the difference between a mentor and your best friend. Your best friend loves you. You will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say, it's alright. All things work together for them that love God. Who are the called. Because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport. So they will forbear a lot of things. They will overlook a lot of things. So your friend, you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear. The day you leave your friend and go to another place, that's where you see the gravity of your blunders. Because your friend has... Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? There are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and I want to correct her. I say, ah, let me correct this lady now. And let this thing backfire. And you say, okay, no problem. God, you are, that's not mentorship, brothers and sisters. That's called friendship. Are you getting my point? A man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you. A man who your success does not come as a big deal to him. Are you getting my point now? Help us, Holy Spirit. Is someone getting blessed? Listen. Let me tell you something. Wisdom does not necessarily come with age. You must understand this. A mentor is somebody who can correct you. I want to say something that will bless you right now. Correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working, your superior is God's protection to you from your next tragedy. Are you getting my point? When, when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you, it is God using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make. He said, my son, pay attention. Don't just hear. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is just sound. Listening is hearing with the intention of obedience. That's the difference between listening and hearing. There are many people who hear all kinds of things. I have been more blessed from the men of God and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries. They are there working. They keep hearing but they never listen. Is God challenging someone tonight? Hmm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen. Please make sure you are writing. In one hour, brothers and sisters, look at me. In one hour, I can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again. Are you getting my point? In one hour, I can, for paying 500 naira, pastor, I can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years. When I read Rediscovering the Kingdom years ago, the book just came out. I made sure that I ordered it. I wrote a letter to Mike Mo uh, Miles Munro and I told him, I've been blessed by your ministry. May God bless and honor you. And he replied me. He said, may God bless you. Use the book. I got that book. I paid so much. When it came into the country, I made sure I was one of the first people that got it. And I sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the Spirit. But within one day, you can get wisdom from the pain of a man. Is somebody getting blessed? Do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself? Your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right. Is someone getting blessed in this place? Thank you, Jesus Christ. A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important as far as the kingdom is concerned very very important listen i want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life there is an attitude hallelujah this is where a lot of people are missing it please listen i wrote it down here and let me just read it i said to be blessed from a mentor's life you must receive the person of that man of god not just the message the person I see a lot of people who say forget about the person just receive the message and leave him that's junk and nonsense are you getting my point you must first receive the person of that man of God I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders they sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces and then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them it never works that way you cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man the law does not work that way the first requirement is that you must receive the person you must be able to trust the voice of God mentors are not perfect people they are people who have knowledge they are people who have experience they are people who have grace If you are not, if you, if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations. I'll never forget one time, I went somewhere and some people were discussing about Benny Hinn. Shortly when the divorce happened. Is someone getting blessed tonight? They were talking about Benny Hinn. 
and I had the people just shouting and they were saying, I'm disappointed in Benny Hinn. Imagine, how can a great man, and I just kept quiet, I was listening to them. We were watching a program and they were just talking, tearing this man down, saying, this generation self, now what is happening? You don't even trust anybody again. And I listened to them. And later on, I called the person. I said, how could you be this unwise? Hallelujah. Over an information you do not even understand. You are not Ben Hinn's PA. You don't know anything. It's easy to sit down and discuss about people, isn't it? It's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you didn't score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just headed, is easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? Until the day you have the opportunity, you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month. And that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play. You will fish, you will copy the teaching of every man of God till your congregation can even tell you the message. And you will find out that it's just, it's just February. Then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week. That you stand on your stage and say, Ah, but is that scripture correct? It's easy to stand and judge. If the host has said, Never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once. And I listened to them. And I called the person. I said, No, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, you need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. Hallelujah. You must receive the person of that man of God. Number two, you must trust his voice. You must trust that his voice represents the voice of God in your life. Please listen to this. I'm not teaching you error nobody obeyed instructions from a man of God in scripture and went to perdition if he's a true man of God you must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God listen you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say I've had you sir let me go and think about it that's nonsense read your scriptures if you trust that the voice of this man of god is the voice of god you prove it by absolute loyalty this looks very childish but i will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking. Some of my colleagues were just making noise and I kept quiet. I was listening to this man. And he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball. And at a point he said, what kind of person are you? Don't you talk? And I kept quiet. I was just listening. Listening. And later on, he cornered me outside. And he said, I know what I've seen in the spirit about you. Pray for me. I said, I'll pray in my room. Not here. He said, lay hands on me. I said, no, I won't do that. Many foolish young preachers say, yes, sir. You are celebrating my me. Kneel down. Let me show you what anointing can do. See that? No. This is why many people do not. Let me tell you. Success is not about business or job. If you do, it, it accounts for less than 10% of the equation of success. If you neglect these laws, you neglect it to your detriment. Praise the Lord. Is someone listening? It is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man, then his message, his grace, and his anointing will be effective in your life. It's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting. 
listen to their men of God and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense I remember one man who was criticizing Mike Modoc and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life I said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man I said time will tell years later I saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of Mike Modoc's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mentorship creates seven things. And let me just put it, like I said, we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively. Mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry. Number one, it creates impartation. Number two, it creates guidance. Number three, it creates access. It creates impartation it creates guidance it creates access number four it creates endorsement number five it creates promotion or a platform for promotion number six mentorship creates a platform for wisdom seven mentorship creates speed in your life take note of this it was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I would mention their names. And with my zeal, I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said, my son, you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go. God is going to use you greatly. Never criticize a man of God. You are too young to know everything around a man of God's life. Make sure from today. And I said, mommy, God is my witness and in your presence. This is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name. I will challenge wrong doctrines, but not to talk about a man of God. Wisdom. I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia. One day now, I will make a foolish decision, maybe on air. Are you seeing that now? This is how great people, I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship. There are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing. There are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing. Levels of wisdom. Hallelujah. I learned silence from one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet i didn't used to be like that especially if god has revealed to me what what your problem is before you talk i say please save save us the time and he taught me the art of listening that it is wisdom to listen to a man see that Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life. We have a series on that and I will teach you. You don't sit down and choose your mentor. Because you will never choose a man who will flog you. Are you getting my point? You are smart enough. Mentorship is like your assignment. Why will I choose a man who, when people are celebrating me and saying, Apostle Joshua Selman, you look at me and say, young man, no problem, but there is more work to be done. Keep that, all of those accolades and let's work. Do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? 
mentorship is like assignment you don't choose that's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them he said oh boy i am seeing that you like women say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this and he moves from the name you used to call him maybe man of god or daddy or papa he says sir please ah i don't like what kind of thing is this i am a prophet or i am an apostle you're an apostle i'm an apostle <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it he say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him I said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies oh i'm a millionaire let money come oh kingdom you will see what will happen and the person says make sure you take out time to start praying because i see money destroying you this is not word of knowledge this is this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience it's amazing how people come for counseling pastor they come on monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come they sit down good afternoon sir i want to seek your advice and for 30 minutes they are just running their mouth and talking and i'm keeping quiet listening to them and after 30 minutes they say i feel very relieved and i say let's pray <laughs> let's pray They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden if i stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and i'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that i'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that i'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God whereas there are irrefutable principles no man outgrows the need to be guided in his life no man at whatever level no man You discover your mentors and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives mentors are not necessarily perfect people please is someone getting blessed tonight mentors are not necessarily perfect people they are people who have come who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth now look at me there is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man please listen this is not human worship when you sit before a mentor or before a great man only ask questions and listen when you sit before a great man that's not time for discussion a lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see and they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense they are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking or we are colleagues in this you sit down with a woman who has trained eight children and you're a young lady getting married two weeks you're already talking to her about pregnancy 
say this and that and that i read it in this book this woman gave birth to eight children out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. You know, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, Oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, and they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. He said, where will, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter i just start smiling because i know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us holy spirit there is always a price to pay please listen 
there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor there is always a price it will cost you to follow a true mentor adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life look at me never expect a mentor to adjust to your life you are joking if you cannot adjust to the person's life i'll never forget when i went to abuja one time to see a particular man of god four days i had not seen him four days and god was my witness that i never complained i said lord thank you it's a, it's a privilege this is how people too wait for counseling to see me and they are not complaining so i have no rights to complain there are people who call me hello hello this and that and that and i tell them okay we have a counseling session. i say please i don't have that time i can't wait i'm busy ah you are coming to see lecturers professors great men and a young man just comes with his sad jeans is there any way we can just see sharp sharp please i have things to do pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there there is a price never forget this there is a price to pay for mentorship there is a price apostle johnson suleiman was talking and he said something he said that um every time he called um um papa i or richard Jaffa, you know he would call him and then you say johnson how are you and that's how he would leave the phone there he'll be doing something Johnson suleiman said that's how you wait you can't complain you can't argue you can't off the phone that's how you wait and later on say just a minute i'm coming back and you'll continue doing something else some of you would have been offended and angry and say do you not know i'm an apostle too and then as a while you say okay what is it a mentor is not one who calls you apostle joshua selman you should be able to say joshua come you see that sometimes we are used to the accolades of men i am apostle even if you say pastor they say am i pastor is a the same thing as p i'm not i mean you better call the correct thing may god help us because if you get this principle alone many of us tonight this is the key to the next level of your life you have neglected the ministry of great men there is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you praise the lord pursuit is the only proof of passion there are people who get angry maybe they want to see me and maybe we are away on a trip and then they are angry and they call they say i've been calling you for two days and i say i'm sorry what's the issue they say please i've been trusting god for something in my life and you just finished quarreling me you have been calling me for two days i'm not responding whereas maybe i was preaching whereas maybe i was having time with god you know please and please brothers and sisters it takes humility to rise to the top if you are not ready to be humble get set to remain at that level hallelujah i shared with you my story on how i was already preparing to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter before they died I was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and i ins i made up my mind that when i got there i would insist i'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of god your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing. You can sow your way into an anointing. Avoid familiarity. I beg you, Koinonia, listen to me. Let my conscience be clear before God that I taught you this. Avoid familiarity. There are people in my life, our daddy prof is here, and the way, the way that, that, prof respect me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah 
Many of you do not understand the secret. Listen, please listen. This is where you may be missing a lot of things. You can be with a man of God for a long time. Never forget who you are talking to. It's not enough to talk to people. Never forget who. Jesus looked at them and said, Before your father Abraham was, I am. And they said, ah, What are you saying? Never forget who you are talking to. This is not human worship. It's the law. These are the ancient parts that made people great. I never get familiar. There are all kinds of men of God. Something, something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation. One of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries, I won't call their name just to honor the person. He had been trying to reach me. And he had called and called and called and called. And somehow the call could not get through. And you know, he looked at his status and he was offended. He is really an honorable person. You see, I mean, the direct like PA of one of the great men of God in the country. And he's been trying to reach me. And for whatever reason, when he got to our protocol department, we were in, we were in, in, in a meeting in, um, in Quara State. And so we could not attend to him. And then eventually he got offended. And then when he called, you know, he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant. But when he told me who he was, I would have said, Oh God, you have told me who you are. Let me tell you who I am too. I just told him, I said, I'm sorry, sir. I really apologize. I am sorry. We do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working. We apologize on behalf of myself, on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is, thank you, sir. I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we're just standing, boss, 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 oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment. It's called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry in uh, uh, the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not these exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. That means everything created has a divine assignment. Everybody say, I have a divine assignment. Whether you know it or not is irrelevant. Just say, I have a divine assignment. Because after this teaching tonight, in the name of the Lord, you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned. There are so many people escorting others. Jacob, had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death. And he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them.
every man in the earth is a working solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem say i am a working solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula is a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance god does not decide your significance is god's desire for everybody he said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but you decide your significance there is no reason to envy any man there is no reason to be jealous every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems and the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance there are so many men of god angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving Whose problem are you solving? Are you seeing why the wealth of an armed robber is wrong? Because an armed robber points a gun. He's not solving any problem. But he wants to be rewarded. Prosperity is not a mystery, brothers and sisters. The problems you solve decide your significance. When you solve a problem, you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter one he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is 
Your lifting is not in your similarity with others. It is your difference, your uniqueness. There are many preachers in Nigeria. There are many preachers in Zaria. There are many preachers in Kaduna. What makes my ministry different? What makes my ministry to the body of Christ different? What, listen, concentrate on your uniqueness, not your similarity. When it comes to purpose, your uniqueness becomes your edge. So if you are selling recharge card, brother B is selling recharge card, what is your difference? What is that distinguishing factor? That's what gives you an edge. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for his wisdom. How do you discover your assignment? Let's write it very quickly. How do you discover your assignment? Number one, what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve. Write it. What you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it. Anger is the seed for change. Whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change. I hate ignorance. I hate the effect of poverty on people. I hate it with a passion. I hate ignorance of the principles of God. I hate the fact that people do not recognize the Lordship of Christ. And these things have constructed my passion. They have built the framework of my teachings. What agitates you? Take note of the pain and the things that annoy you. Write very quickly two things that really agitate you. That every time you see it, you cry and you wish for change. There is an anointing there. There is always an anointing in the place of pain. Pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Identify your highest point of anger. Identify your highest point of anger. There is something that agitates you. When you see people go through it, when you see your family members go through it, something in you cries. That's the anointing of the spirit. Hallelujah. When Moses saw the Egyptians suffering, something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him. Are you getting my point now? To an extent that he killed somebody. Have you been ignoring your pain? Do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit? God has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason. There are many of us, God has, has anointed us to be saviors. He has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom. Are you seeing what we have refused? We have ignored. Please let me have your attention. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit is just doing his thing. God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion. I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat pie, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. 
What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you. Even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation. But there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show passionately and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put belly him and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And you are saying, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. Every time you mention Aura Roberts, what comes into your heart? Healing. Is that true? Benny Hinn, healing. Is that true? Billy Graham, evangelism, JJ Okocha. Is that true? If I mention your name and nothing comes to my mind, your difference has not been refined enough. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you say Tiger Woods, golf, right? Tyra Banks, fashion people. See them all smiling. Praise God. If your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word, you do not know it. You can say my life's mission is, is to bring the rescue, the, the, the lost sheep, you know, from all the will that look, all of that long story. There must be a theme that you can live for and die for. hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment Many of us do not know that God speaks through opportunities. God never told David to kill Goliath. He saw an opportunity. And he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity. And he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world. He got a wife for free. He got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity. And I want to tell you something. God speaks again through favor. This is how you know that you have been called in an area. Never stay in an area where there is no favor. It's a sign that God is not there. Even in the prison, Joseph was still favored. That's a sign that God is with you. Please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor. There are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious. God has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you. 
favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh the lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography is a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never open and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of joss opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and yola and all of that including my neighbor i mean neighbors that we grew up together they took my teaching my own uncle my own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying and then got to find out i was the one and he cried and said my own son is in ministry and is changing the world and i'm here dying and so that that familiarity they received the teaching not knowing it was me and then when they had now respected the anointing then god opened up to them it is this person are you getting the point now that's the reason why although many of you are anointed you find out that every time you get home you just feel ordinary that presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born you are the child everybody knows even if you tell them god is saying they say shut up what do you know about god but the day they are ready to receive your anointing they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter your assignment is geographical thank you jesus christ your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate listen listen please listen look up look up before you write let me explain something to you um come sam how many of you agree and believe that sam is a powerful worshiper but do you know as gifted as sam can be sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated how many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory 
where nobody can celebrate your grace and God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness, even you, you are shocked. You never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace. Has it happened to anybody? You keep singing and when you sing, they just tell you, go and sit down and you get to a place where people say, sorry sir, are you living right now? Please, can you come and minister in our church? Which hotel are you saying? Say they, they kept me in one car. They say, please come, 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 come. Make, make arrangement. Make, and you are saying goodness. Look, let me tell you. There are things that people do for me when I go for ministrations and I'm amazed. I'm almost saying, oh God, please let this thing not become human worship. And I'm, I'm shocked, honestly. When I'm in my hotel room, I'm now looking, I'm like, goodness. Ah! I will discover every other thing that is left that I have not discovered. Oh, when you are in the geography of your assignment, men will pay you in a way that will shock you. They will pay for any and everything to receive your grace. Stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated. There are many of you, you are, everybody tolerates you everywhere. There is a place where your grace can be celebrated. And I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time, I, I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and i'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of God that is in you people and everyone here we never you never see me treat people based on who your father is I don't want to know whether your father is a minister whether you are married to to the to a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why I never try to do what I am not gifted, anointed, skilled, or trained for. I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry. Now, let me advise you, especially if you are in ministry, 
or you are in any form of leadership there's something i wrote that is very powerful you don't give yourself to people listen you give yourself to god and you give god to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself give yourself to god and give god to the people many preachers are dying and killing themselves they want to do everything for everybody no sir no sir give yourself to god and then give god to the people thank you jesus christ thank you jesus christ number three this is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight I tell you, you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success. I don't care what the limitations are in the name of Jesus Christ. As we talk about this, just, just pray. Can you just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I love your laws. I love your laws. Go ahead and pray. Just pray in one minute as I talk about this last law. Just a few minutes, our time is gone. And then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. hallelujah oh shibala katabaladaba somebody's life is about to change first timothy chapter 5 17 and 18 the last law we'll talk about is the law of honor the law of honor blessed be the name of the lord every time i teach on this something happens to someone's destiny the law of honor first timothy 5 17 and 18 look up everybody let's read one to read let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what double honor especially they that labor in word and in doctrine hallelujah let's look at one more scripture first peter 2 verse 17 and then i'll teach this for me is one of the greatest laws of success it may not be like that for you but this for me Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, one to go. Honor all men and honor the king honor all men and honor the king wisdom is the ability to recognize difference but honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference to honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness please look up honor in the school of success is the seed for access say it one more time everybody honor is the seed for access you will never access a place a grace 
an anointing a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you and you find out that nothing will be the bible says honor all men and then honor the king this is why we take our time to worship god we take our time to honor the king honor always creates favor let me tell you this if you've been looking for how to create favor in your life i'm telling you how it comes now favor honor always creates favor 100 percent of the time the favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor you dishonor men you will never experience favor listen listen look at me this is pastor, pastor pete rock's wife get this hallelujah pastor pete is my friend he's my brother in the ministry i love him so much he respects me so much and i honor him so much this is his wife are you getting my point if i treat his wife well i have communicated that honor she will speak well about me in the presence of her husband and in the presence of another is that true is that true so i am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you there's all kinds of disrespect around the bible says honor your father and your mother let me tell you why many young people are struggling in nigeria i want to be very sincere with you the bible says honor your father and your mother it says so that your days will be long and it will go well with you are you seeing why it's not going well with many people i know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them call their mother prostitute call their father drunkard and it may be true what they are saying but let me tell you the truth you dishonor your parents you are in for failure failure that god will not stop except you cry for mercy and change is someone getting blessed never dishonor elders i don't care what level of grace you get to as i am like this if i see an elderly woman that i know carrying something maybe she went to grand and all of that i see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are they put it on their head they are going and immediately they are going you see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend or one guy she calls her boyfriend they don't even know what they are doing they are just bouncing and they, mom see ya and they are going and the mother is carrying this this is dishonor the bible says if you don't honor your parents listen to what i'm telling you it says it will not be well with you as simple as that hallelujah oh i will say it i will say it there are many of us we have no respect at all for elderly people there are even people that beat their parents that one is not just that it will not be well with you you just brought a curse upon your life if you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him that's what the bible says i will never never rebuke an elder these are laws there are many graduates they thought it's just getting degree now you have gotten the degree nothing is happening they thought it's just oratory and all of that. No, they thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus Christ. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again, especially the door to the grace of a man of God, check well, there is dishonor there. The entire Ten Commandments was all about honor. Honoring God and honoring men. God is so obsessed with honor. It's not enough to believe in a man of God. You must honor that man to ever get the grace. I taught this in commanding results. And it's all oh goodness. I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people. Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in, in, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman. Man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us you come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down say, I forget oh this is not the issue of anything this is my right you see a lot of people do that and we laugh about it and you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything no job no marriage no nothing and you do not know that this is the law we are violating how many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. I had the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset local champions and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you, this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You're a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing. Eh? He's singing, but what's the, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated. So he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. Once you find yourself criticizing people, you are communicating a dissatisfaction. 
is natural with human beings manage it through the law of honor are you getting what i'm saying i celebrate men of god i celebrate vessels of honor generously many of us are very embarrassed let me tell you a few things that you should never do look up please never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a he says you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and and carried and all and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day i will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her i don't care where she's going this is honor are you getting my point many of you do not know the law of honor i celebrate men in the secret and in the open i've been following a conference a conference right now i had to follow mike mudok's conference with david biome and i've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again there's a conference going on in koza i cannot attend it and i've been following it online paying the internet right now as i'm preaching it's paining me but i'm supposed to, <laughs> i'm supposed to have been following the conference but i sure will remedy for it Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And all. I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found out it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah never trivialize greatness no matter how little it is never trivialize greatness never trivialize greatness they invite you to go and preach and you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana you it, it never is just favor don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches uh -uh. celebrate the gift celebrate the grace do what god has called you to do God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed if you do not have a seed look for opportunities to serve are you getting what i'm saying i never see a man of god empty-handed no matter what happens and i'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in malachi chapter one that people can't no no you don't bless a great man with leftovers you bless a great man honorably i'm teaching you principles that make for great men i lift my hands in worship as i sing 
praise is to your name father i lift my hands in worship as i sing glory to your name i never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed never 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 is is a taboo as far as i'm concerned never i never go to greet and see an elderly person if if even if i don't take a gift then it means i'm going to send something but many of us we do not understand that these are little principles this is how the kingdom is built you neglect it at your detriment i'm rounding up there are two ways i taught you to receive from a great man one is service and the other is seed if you don't have money go and look for the man of god's clothes say sam just early in the morning just say sam i came to your house where are your clothes sam will say no say chill me here bring it out and you carry a bucket and you are washing hebrews 7 7 and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you see a woman you go to her house and say mommy i came to wash your plates today say no no my daughter there are no plates carry the ones that are clean say they are dusty soak them again lord this is how i will have my home this is how i will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the lord jesus now let me say something because i know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening please listen to this never invite a man of god whether a music minister a worship minister for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him you see a lot of people do this in the body of christ let me correct it now hallelujah this is an apostolic ministry we speak to the body of christ and i'm speaking to the body of christ he must be corrected never invite a man of god that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift are you getting my point there are many people who want to bring every great man of god but they are not prepared if i am going to bring this man as a professional decorator for instance i must have the ability to honor his grace if i cannot use what you have please is somebody getting blessed there are so many people i want to invite this i want to invite that there are so many men of god that have been pained because people just invite them come for a meeting and they never make adequate arrangement there are laws and principles in this ministry there are very few men of god who have invited here and i can tell you this with all humility when we invite a man of god we we prepare as if his marriage because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us then we better not invite him are you getting my point when we invite a man of god right from the junction the protocol department is waiting for him when he gets there they pick him there are people who invite a man of god and it's when he comes you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room he says, sorry how much is this room is it double or single standard or this thing and the money you have been planning for a meeting for a long time are you getting my point now pastor williams is just standing and you are wondering or a man of god that you invite you say has he come he's outside you just say sorry please stand up stand up keep these two seats sir you are welcome what are you doing you are not intentional about the spirit of excellence and now i know that many people have not been trained to recognize this but I want you to know, you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor. I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session immediately it finishes you just you just everybody pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that 
there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of God. Let me use the opportunity and say this. Number one, his hospitality. Hospitality. Especially when you are, it's okay if you are inviting a man of God that is within your region. Please say it because this has not been taught in the body of Christ. Number one, hospitality. Never carry a man of God and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are inviting. No, don't do that. Hospitality. Hallelujah. Prepare very well. Let the man of God eat well. If he's fasting, ask him, don't assume. Don't say, bring only dinner. I already know this guy. He's always fasting. What if he's not fasting that day? Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it would take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium. Honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace. Just like teachers, you can never really reward mentors and men of God and great men make sure you never bring a man of god i remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere they had been disturbing this guy and when he went to preach i'm being sincere with you <laughs> immediately he finished they you know this kind of this kind of um these wire papers they just squeeze 500 naira roll roll it as if it's bribe and just say me we thank you for your grace ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious i'm not exaggerating now imagine that that man of god has a wife are you getting my point and now this man left his wife for three days this is his job this is where god blesses him and he comes back after three days right and she's happy she welcomes him and the man said we came back from the vineyard of the lord we have done exploits for the kingdom blind eyes were open you know sick bodies and then they just bring this pta you know this pta letter of primary school where they they will leave dash and they put the amount and say honey just to remind you that uh, junior is going to school day after tomorrow and the man of god becomes angry he's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying never bring a man of god that you are not your capacity don't say i can bring anybody let me tell you the mistake there are many people who try to bring men of god and they overlook these things and when it happens it's like it endorses their error and so they say look even so 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 and so person we have brought him talk more of you you don't know the inconvenience that person went through and he just did it for the sake of the gospel by the grace of god if you see us invite anybody in this house i can tell you at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that god has given us we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed Blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow, he will say, thank you, I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor. Personal disobedience. Deuteronomy, when you read, I think chapter 28 or so, it shall come to pass, it says, thou shalt diligently hearken to these things, to do and observe all that I command you this day. That you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you 
that when you disobey God, nothing happens. No. It's not about God doing it. It's about the laws in the spirit. They will not change. They didn't start with the Old Testament. Those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight, I want you to look at your life very carefully. Especially for those of us who have come. Have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other? That does not mean you are not born again. That does not mean you are not serious with God. But it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say, no way. I come by the blood. I come to challenge these things. There are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life. Somebody buys a recharge card to give you, it disappears physically. That's, that's the extent to which this thing is working against you. Have you seen people like that? A guy tells a lady, I love you, car will jam him two hours later. Just for trying to verbalize that I'm considering marrying you. Car jams him. His friend now comes and says, Tor, since my friend has come, me too, I love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and receive the slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it. Gave him a slap. When, listen, when I was in secondary school, we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site. That temporal site used to be a hospital. Are you getting the point? Where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen. I tell you, many students had encounters with strange beings. You are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds. Sounds that can give you a headache for a long time. I remember our school getting ultimate power so that we will watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this, this nonsense. Many students were initiated into occultism because of that. But tonight... We come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the army. That this situation in your life must end. I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies. A testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life. Any other spirit must create problems. Tonight, daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives i saw poverty in my family as if we offended god coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed, be addressed. That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose. Loose? He didn't say thou art healed. He said thou art loose. The moment the spirit left, he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body. And there she went. Remember that madman at Gadarin? That was an evangelist in a cave. Tearing himself into pieces. The moment the spirit heard that Jesus was coming, they were waiting for him at the other side. 
Hallelujah. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying. Praying seriously, I was in the spirit. And I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay. And I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast like, like, a, like a being. The tail was a snake. The eyes were big like human head. Imagine this head now like an eye. Two of them. One here, one here. And the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger. And all he told me is, so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity. And then it left. That was it. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me. And Satan will say, Amen. Let's go. And then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say, help me. Tonight we are going to cry to the King of Kings. I don't know if you came for this miracle service, especially for those who are family people here. You should never go back the same. You see the results of people? 4.8, 5 points. They have always had that ability. Even when they were getting one point. It's a spirit that makes that happen. Don't let anyone fool you. You are not so daft. Human beings were created intelligent. When you enter an exam hall. And you write nonsense. And come out with zero. And smile. And say it's just because I didn't read well. Is that really true? How many of you watch film twice to explain it? You sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife. And that was, you didn't read for it, yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that I didn't get it. It is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages, but a lifetime, you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this, I will bring it for you next week Friday and you will exhaust it. But from the day you were born, the day you were born, till today, you have not read up to one third of the Bible. One time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later. Remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward. You started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance. After you read it, you now threw it away. Because you cannot help yourself in the flesh. It takes the anointing of the spirit. That's why he sends carpenters. That's why he puts miracle services like this. So that you can come under the influence of God's power. How about genotype issues, SS? You get up and find out you are SS or AS. Do you know the Bible never mentions the issue of SS or AS? Are you aware of that? That thing was a technology that was fabricated by Satan to stop people from getting married. You see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one, one demonic report called SS and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight I'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to Mount Zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that Jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power 
that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me jump up on your feet as we sing it one more time same power that conquered the grave lives in me Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves. When that happens to you, you will see realms of favor. All these things people pray on. You must challenge those spirits. You must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family. And God is ready for us tonight, I tell you. God is ready for us tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word. The body without a spirit is dead. The body without the spirit is dead. Now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life. Lift your voice and thank you for this revelation. Lord, I now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family. There is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life. There is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let your dissatisfaction rise from you. Ma prata de baka te prata ke le bato ko sopra te bela le bos. Oh, come on! Tonight is your night of liberty. Same path. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Just the voices, sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. 
the power that can challenge any altar the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquer the grave lives in me lives in Lives in me, lives in me. Same power, power that conquered the grave. Lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures, challenge the spirit behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will 
they will bring you into error so that everything you see misleads you into trouble i'd like you to lift your voice again just do what i'm asking you to do from the realm of the heavens challenge powers challenge forces over your finances Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Matalabata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, second. I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotoshe. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Brings deliverance tonight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. 
Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victim. One, two, three. He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy. God is healing people. Can you appreciate Jesus? 
Hallelujah. There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone. Severe peptic ulcer. It hooks you. Hooks you very seriously. As we started praying, it just disappeared. Who is that? Make your way to the front right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if I don't call anybody's case I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm calling miracles. Cases that have happened. Help me. Um, Aaron, would you help me? Just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies. God is giving people miracles. Miracles right now. Miracles right now. Miracles are happening right now. I'm seeing somebody. Listen. There is a growth. You came here with the growth at the back of your neck. Check it now. It has disappeared. Check it now. Now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now. You'll find out that that pile is gone. Gone back to the devil. Go and check it, please. Please, we are not playing games. Don't sit back. Confirm your miracle and seal it. I know there is a guy. I saw a guy. Pile. Severe pile. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. Tears just start coming out of your eyes. Without any... You are not crying. But it just starts coming out. It's very embarrassing. It starts coming out. Right now, the Lord is healing you. Wherever you are, confirm it and make your way to the front right now. Confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now. Right now. Confirm it and make your way to the front. We'll give all of them room to testify. God is healing people right now. I'm seeing someone with this finger. Look at me. This finger. This very finger. That's what the Lord is showing me. There is a miracle happening on that finger. This very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? This, you are saying, please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. 
Just testify. Tell us, look at the crowd, straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me, look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus. While we are patient. talking, there is a lady who will come patient. strongly under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. Yes, please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one praying. more outside. Go and carry her. Jesus. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should sh we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just I left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. 
right now right now right now please bring the lady out god is healing her mother right at home and god is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm, I'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my name is like i'm pregnant it's to come like pain as an i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relieved and my stomach in fact open. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff and um, it's you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now god is giving you a miracle god is giving you a miracle god bless you bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the lord so i now shout the stomach used to pay me even before i come to zaria but i can't feel it again. completely gone yes. give jesus praise it never returns again yes please praise the lord um recently i started having this eye pain when i'm walking doing other things one of the eye get blank and i don't see again but now and after the prayers i feel one sharp pain and i used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time but it just left me immediately give jesus praise it never returns to you again in the name of jesus glory be to jesus christ this abdominal pain starts two days ago so i came here and when i was praying i just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god is to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now but what has right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co sir. comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At the shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Chica concerning pain. In the pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that god is working on yes. their system and, and now what has happened to you the pain is gone. the pain is completely even gone the medical, Jesus praise. even the medical report is in my room the medical report is in your room yeah. you go and check yourself and you find out all of you that were under the anointing where you get up don't just go back to your seat check 
you will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the keys, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specified by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like the swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very, a swelling there yeah and now have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there okay completely gone come on give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the of spirit of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want to I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child when, when I was when I was young. I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know, sometimes 2nd of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her, fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No pain having, now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Okay. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. Listen, Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's, if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zamiki Adua, please, you should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother yes. do, you, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it. But it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. 
write it down you will come back and testify before them it's not a disadvantage it's something that will bless you in no small way because you have come with your heart open in the name of the lord jesus christ father i lay my hands i pray right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name praise the lord your mother is sick what's wrong with her she has been bleeding for the past one year bleeding you, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here huh? your mother bleeding for one year non-stop how about that and you fell under the anointing no, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her okay sir. no problem we have a session for that but since you came out hold my hands hold my hands look at me do you believe God will touch your mother where is she where is home Taraba Taraba state yes, sir. you are from Taraba yes, sir. Lord show mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ as it touches you it touches her please don't just come out at will ah, you are related to her your sister is Titi Lyon. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Cardinal. What's she doing? She's schooling at Cardinal. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You? I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He raised. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Come on and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way.
Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do mighty. You do glory. You do glory. You're a faith. Awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you any child hear me i'm saying this especially to we young people any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs have swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having a problem with my mama. None of his children look at him except him. The same problem that mama is having, that he prayed for. It's just a similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're oh God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faith. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. 
how can a baby like this this is an apostle this is a prophet this is a great man or what male or female male male man of god in the making and a spirit come how would you like to have a child that do you know what it means for the brain not to develop that child becomes like an imbecile forever in the name that is above all names we lay hands upon this child we are not only praying that god will heal him but god will use him my god i pray right now let the brain begin to develop we cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness right now in the name of jesus from village I go election I will charm from village look at this mama went for election they fired something upon her head now she's mad is she mad is she your dog now yes. you are mad no you are you are not mad in the name of Jesus say I'm not mad I'm not mad in the name of Jesus whoever organized that charm on your head it returns back to them sevenfold Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? come do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you i'm looking at you don't feel embarrassed eh i'm looking at you but i'm seeing you smoking something eh tell me the truth don't tell me this is what death would have killed you you are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing eh in jaham you go yes, sir. is that not true yes, sir. you are smoking the devil wants to kill you this is look at look at this Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. 
Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are or you are still with those your friends yes, you are still with those your friends yes, we cancel those relationships right now Amen. i'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people yes. they are smoking and they are giving you to smoke but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you yes, you have to leave them we cancel that relationship in jesus name the bible hear me don't say i'm not doing it but i'm sitting down where others are doing it the bible says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day and night i curse that madness in the name of jesus christ and i pray for supernatural healing look at me look at me lift your hands forget about the wound lift it up careful you broke the hand oh it can't lift Oh, I say, no, 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 if you can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes, you go in this place. If you know you smoke, you go. Or codeine. Altar. Once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is here. out
love upon your feet. I'm going to be praying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you seriously and completely from this night take over my life be my Lord and Savior let your life come upon me I break free from habits from sins and everything that destroys my life from today I'm a child of God I am saved in the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. And um, we'll fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. In one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Shabakata bosh. Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback. In the name of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ 
and you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life, every cry for direction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come. Your best result in your various institutions. This exam is what will produce it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you record five points. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever has stagnated your family. By this anointing I declare. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has covered your glory. So that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen. In the name of Jesus we tear that veil off. We tear that veil off. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you. Before next miracle service. I call them forth into your life. Mysterious help us. Mysterious help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Fresh grace for prayer. Fresh anointing for prayer. Every lack of passion for the things of God. I kill it right now in the name of Jesus. Every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life. It dies a natural death here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. With these hands that are lifted, go and begin to produce results. Go and heal the sick. Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death. That the devil has said you will not see the end of this year. In the name of Jesus, we lift up that embargo. We lift up that embargo. Favor like you have never seen, receive it right now. Open doors like you have never seen, receive it right now. Breakthroughs like you have never seen, receive it right now. I speak life to every dying thing in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has rejected you, may they look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command prophetic dreams. Mysterious spiritual experiences. May God show you the solution to your problems. In dreams and visions. Whoever is behind the failure of your life. We command judgment upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesy unto you. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Access to deep revelation. Access to insight in the spirit. Whenever they are looking for men to favor, may they find you. May they find you. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed in the city and blessed in the country. You are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in. Every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of Jesus. I declare that the seal of the blood is upon you. You have no covenant with failure. You have no covenant with death. May God use you mightily. 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 I declare, may the mantle of honor come upon your life. 
that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may God bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you